Let's examine how to use Jackson's JSON getter annotation to serialize the return value of a method. The JSON getter annotation is used to mark a method to use as a property getter. This method is called during serialization and its return value is then serialized. The method must be non static, not require an argument, and of course, return a value. By default, the property name in the resulting JSON will be derived from the method name. However, you can specify a name to use as a property by passing it to the annotation as metadata. An alternative way to achieve a similar result is to use the JSON property annotation. We'll learn more about that in another video. Okay, we're going to have a look at two examples. The first example will demonstrate using the annotation in its default state, that is, without passing a property name to the annotation. And then, in the second example, we will pass the name that we want Jackson to use as a property name in the JSON string representation. Okay, let's switch to the code view and see this in action. We're going to serialize the author class. In the author class here, you can see that the getItems method has been annotated JSON getter. As mentioned before, this method will be called when the author class is serialized and return value, a list, will be serialized to a JSON array. By default, the property name will be based on the method name. In this case, the prefix get will be removed and what remains will be formatted in camel case and used as the property name. So the property name will be items. It's not required to prefix the method with get, but if you do, it will be removed. Let's execute the corresponding unit test and ensure that the property name items actually appears in the JSON string Jackson produces. The unit test asserts that the result of the serialization includes a list named items. So we execute the test and as you can see, the test passes. And now let's review the actual JSON output. This is the JSON output and as you can see, the returned list from the getItems method has been serialized as an array and named items. Now let's go back to the author class and specify a property name that we want Jackson to use when it serializes the return value of the getItems method. I want to use the property name publications. Okay, so let's run the test to ensure that the property name that I specified is being used by Jackson and that the property name items does not appear in the resulting JSON string. And as you can see, the test has passed. Now let's jump to the JSON that Jackson produces. And here you can see the property name I specified has indeed been used by Jackson as the name of the items array. And that's how we use the JSON getter annotation. One last thing that might be worth noting is that you can have as many methods annotated JSON getter as you need, just ensure that the resulting property names don't conflict.